we might have our first soon to be open source model competitor to the GPT-40 voice capability that was just demonstrated about two months ago now. A research lab out of Paris, QTI, have released this model as well as this interface that they're calling Moshi. So Moshi.chat is the website. To gain access to this, and before I dive into it, I'm just going to show you what exactly this is. You can plug in your email here and then you can join the queue. And as soon as I click join queue, it will very quickly start to begin the interaction. And I'll just role play a little bit to demonstrate to you what it does. Help us. What's up? Home? I'm just trying this out. Could you tell me a little bit about yourself? I'm a neural network with a few billion parameters, which is a type of artificial intelligence. I've been trained on vast amounts of data, making me quite knowledgeable and capable of answering questions. Oh no, we have to be really quiet. Could you whisper all your responses yes. back to me? Okay, let's whisper. Let's whisper okay. from here on out. Okay, so tell me more about yourself in really well, good detail. I'm Moshi, a neural network with a few billion parameters. I've been trained on vast amounts of data, making me quite knowledgeable and capable of answering questions. Okay, could you respond back in maybe a French accent? Certainly. Okay. Would you like to know? Okay, could you tell me a little bit about, let's say, a trip to New York City? Could you give me some ideas on some things that I could potentially do there? Certainly. New York City is a bustling metropolis with many things to do and see. You can visit the Statue of Liberty, take a walk in Central Park, or visit the Museum of Modern Art. All right, so as you saw there, there's just a really quick example. So you can give it a thumbs up if you had a good interaction. If you didn't, you could give it a thumbs down, and then you can just disconnect to pause it, and then you can continue it from just clicking the start over button there. You also have the ability to download the video as well as download the audio. What's interesting with this demo is this is the first soon to be open source model, which is speech in and speech out. You can see that the latency, it's almost too fast, right? They have a keynote on YouTube, which I'll link to in the description of the video and click through and see the demonstrations. The impressive thing with this, which they talked about in their keynote, is that this is the first research prototype that they have. And they built it from scratch in six months with only eight people. The model can support 70 different emotions and styles like whispering, accents, and you saw a few of those within the demo that I had there where I could ask it to whisper and it was able to whisper back. You could ask it for particular accents and it can potentially respond if it has that certain type of accent. There's a number of exciting things with this model. First, it's shipping. You saw that you can interact with this today before ChatGPT shipped GPT-40. Now mind you, GPT-40 is going to be delivered to tens of millions of people once it's released. Some of the details I found on Twitter, which is a really good post, which I'll also link within the description of the video here. So Helium is a speech in and speech out model. It streams out constantly the generated text tokens as well as the audio codex, which is also tunable. You can see that the latency is incredibly short. And I inspected the web app and it is using WebSockets to communicate back and forth. I'd imagine eventually they'll probably use something like WebRTC for that interaction within an app like they have. Some of the interesting pieces on the training and the RLHF is that the model is fine-tuned on 100,000 transcripts that were generated from the Helium model itself. All of these transcripts were highly detailed and heavily with emotion and a style. The text-to-speech engine is further fine-tuned with 20 hours of audio recorded by Alice and license. The model can be fine-tuned with less than 30 minutes of audio. In terms of the training, so this was trained on 1,000 H100 GPUs, and then this model is going to be capable to be deployed and hosted on Scaleway and Hugging Face. The model is capable of scaling down in both 8-bit and 4-bit quantization, and the backends works on CUDA metal and CPUs. In terms of the release itself, there is the web app that you can go ahead and interact with, but soon there will be a technical report as well as the open models that will be released. The open model released will include also the inference code base, the 7 billion parameter model, the audio codec, as well as the full optimized stack. There's going to be a ton that we're going to be able to learn from the release here as they begin to release this. In terms of the license, it looks like it's going to be as permissible as possible. TBD on that front. And then in terms of when they actually release the model for all of us to use and deploy on our own infrastructure, that's still TBD. In just the past couple of weeks, we've seen some really interesting and compelling competitors come to the spotlight that are beginning to challenge OpenAI in a number of ways. 
So just a couple of weeks ago, we saw Claude Sonnet 3.5 that was released, which became, by all intents and purposes, one of the most powerful models overnight. And it also was released with that interesting artifacts feature that I think a lot of us have played around with. And then just recently, we had Runway ML release their Sora competitor. And now we see that sort of Scarlett Johansson type of voice that was demonstrated with the GPT-4 O demonstration. They do have a press release that they put out today in tandem with their announcement. I'll just go through the press release a little bit. Uh, the line that really stood out to me in this press release is Moshi can be installed locally and therefore run safely on an unconnected device. Just imagine what I just demonstrated to you. If you would be able, if you're able to have that built within your laptop and be able to have a conversation just like that, where you could imagine maybe instead of a Siri pod or a Google home or what have you, being able to interact with something like this that's low latency. The last thing that I do want to mention within here is that the code and weights of the model will soon be freely shared. They're coming out of the gate and they're basically saying, hey, look, we're just a handful of people. Look what we can do in just a number of months. And they're going to be releasing this widely to the world. I think Mistral did an incredible job. They gave us a ton of really powerful models with permissive licenses like the Mistral 7B model. And all of a sudden you have a ton of people across the world being able to run these models locally on their devices. And I think this could be a similar approach or playbook for QITI. Imagine if you could have something like this on your laptop and be able to interact in real time and have a conversation and be able to interact with your applications or what have you and build on top of it. So a ton of really interesting stuff here, but really an incredible release of what just eight people can do in a number of months. I really commend the team over at QITI. I hope they really have a ton of success from this demo. I hope they become maybe like the Mistral of these multimodal models potentially. Who knows? But I just wanted to do a quick one, point you to the app, try it out. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. But that's it for this one. If you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until the next one.